Hello and welcome to the 2016 Australasian Championships. I am Liam Minnie Smith and this is the panel. Now, as you know, every day we are joined by two rotating panel member guests. And today I am very happy to have, of course, one of the head referees here, head of the volunteer program, Simi Bear. How are you? Good in yourself, Minnie. Oh, always good when you're here. And of course, on my left, we have one of the players from the Canberra Falcons, Nicole. Hello, nice to be here. It's good. Now guys, we have now hit the uh, business end of the competition. We're in Cascade 1 now. We've had the round robin over. We're just warming up, nearly done with the bottom tier games. How do you guys think the teams are going so far? Oh look, my team's doing better than expected. I think we were ranked 29th on the sync list and we're currently in 22nd, so I'm all happy girl. Beating out some teams that shouldn't be down that bottom end. And how are the Falcons going? I know you guys have played a few games recently and you've got a few more to go today. How are you doing so far? Doing okay. We've done two so far today out of our three, and we've got three tomorrow because uh, we managed to get high enough to, to split over two days. Makes life wonderful. We've got a first, we've got a second, so we'll see how it goes. How many more games do you guys have today and against two? Just the one, um, and it is a bit of a mixed game against a couple of Brisbane teams and a New Zealand team, or a Brisbane team and a New Zealand team. How do you guys reckon you'll go? We'll see, we'll see. We might, not to give anything away, we might try something a bit different. So, base dump, yes. <laughs> now, apart from that, we did actually have a bit of controversy yesterday when one of the uh, Hobart players, Lepar, was injured. Now, I know Simi Bear here is quite close to Lepar in every sense <laughs> of the word. <laughs> How is he actually coping at the moment with his injury? Ah, uh, look, I don't think he's happy about it. I think he'd rather be playing right now. Um, but uh, he's on strict orders to uh, stay sitting where he is, so that's something he's going to have to deal with right now. And how do you reckon his team's score will suffer because of that? They've already dropped a number of games today. I think they only picked up the one second and the rest were third. So they're going to go right down the ladder, um, hopefully not to the wooden spoon, so Leopard doesn't get the reverse nuffa. Are they playing with a four at the moment? They certainly are playing with a four. They uh, didn't have a backup player. So as is, I've been brought in from Western Australia to play for the other teams. So we're a bit short on players in Hobart. It's unfortunate when stuff like that happens, but as we know, it is a very competitive game and people do tend to get injured. Now, the other thing I do want to discuss is the Lord of the Rings finals are going to happen soon. We do have our final three competitors, all three Maroons players. How do you feel about that one? I, well, I got knocked out really early. It's not my game, but it's honestly, it's not surprising just the way they play, like physically. Um, it's a game that suits their style, so not surprising. It would be interesting to see more varied players in the finals but hey good on them for getting there if you had to pick one of the three who you reckon is going to take it who would you put your money on i honestly have no idea like it's as much of a muchness like they any on any given day one of them will take it we'll see how it goes it's not as public i believe this year so uh we'll see we'll see how it goes any thoughts on who will knock it out oh look i have no idea either we might we might just say Beefy, he made finals last year with an injured leg and got himself a trophy not being able to stand, so he has to maybe get it there this year with uh, being able to stand. I feel the Maroons will definitely win this game. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, every day on the show, we do like to discuss a bigger question, and today is quite a big one, so we will go into it in a bit more depth than usual. Um, today we'll be discussing the monetization of the Nationals events. Should we have a prize pool? Should there be an actual money reward for a top team? Um, I think there should. I'm pretty, pretty vocal about this, um, but I have been for a while. Um, I think the idea of monetizing a competition is a, a pretty vital step in its evolution. We're still considered a game in some cases rather than a sport and I think it's a step forward that's something we can completely control and we can dictate and something that sort of, I hate to use it, but justifies it as a sport. Um, it's a terrible way to describe it because it shouldn't be required, but I think it's something that we can do and we can control um, and it will get us that little bit step further to being taken by some people, more seriously. So. How do you feel about the monetization of the Nationals events? Should there be a prize pool for the winning team or winning places? Oh, look, I don't think it will hurt anything. I play other competitions where there's a prize pool of money at the end of it and they're considered sports. One of them's pool. doesn't require any exertion whatsoever. So it only makes sense that we need to go that next step and get ourselves recognised as a sport. 
We're now going through formalities of setting up volunteer programs and people actually working behind the scenes to make this work and that is another step that needs to happen is making it seem as it is a sport so we get sponsorships and things like that. Now the interesting thing about this is how would you go of obtaining that prize pool? Would you seek sponsorship or would you intend maybe increase the actual fee for player registration? I think initially uh, player registration fees is probably the easiest way to, to quickly acquire some money that can be then returned as a prize pool. Um, sponsorship comes with uh, organisations and companies thinking the sport actually can be sponsored and can be advertised through. So initially uh, player registration, maybe bumping that up, using that extra additional funds to support a prize pool, whether or not it's for the entire competition or just part of it, this brings up divisioning of the competition which might be required to make it work but we'll see how it goes um, assuming it steps forward it's going to be a bit of trial and error but I think player registration is going to be the first one so the easiest thing for us to do. If you were to do it would you prefer to go the, the sponsorship and advertising revenue or do you reckon that the player fee increase is maybe a better idea? I think I'm with Nicole on this one. I think the first step we need to make is do the registrations. It's going to be very, very hard to get sponsorship and things like that without um, us actually funding our own prize pool to start with and get some interest in the sport and doing these media things and that is the right way to get some advertising out there, but we need to build on it and get some interest. Now, you mentioned before the division of players. Can you explain in that a bit more detail? I guess we're getting to a point, and we've seen it in a few nationals over the last few years, that we're getting the numbers now like when we're looking at 30 plus teams it's, we've got 30 teams this year i believe um we've had 36 i think was the highest we ever did 32 shows my well, it was a few years ago that's a, that but when we're looking at that many teams the idea of divisioning up the competition to a div one or div two i think supports a more I guess inclusive competition, you've got teams that are coming in, uh, new teams that are sitting and predicted and that bottom half, bottom half or even bottom third of the field and it's a long long way for them to get up to that top 10 things like that so having a second division shows them or gives them a stepping stone which to work towards and I think that's something that again helps the sport. How do you feel about the division of players if we were to introduce a monetary prize? Look, the division of players is an interesting one because the current way we rank our teams going into this competition is a bit arbitrary and I don't like it. As we all know, I was ranked, I think, WAD when I took out a title. Now, under the current way that you guys want to split the competition up, meant I wouldn't have even been in contention. So, it's something that, yeah, I know. So, we need to think about how we rank these teams and how we put them in a Divi 1, Divi 2 and how we qualify teams to go up to one and two but it is a good idea I think we just need to put a lot more thought into it. Um, an interesting point you raised before the show was that if you do want to elect a play in that top tier competition that maybe they have to elect a play an extra fee that would then be contributed to the prize pool. Can you explain in that a bit more detail? So that sort of balances the idea of the monetization as well as the divisioning of players. It allows um, potentially if it works um, players can elect to play in a Div 1 versus a Div 2 and to get into that Div 1 you pay that additional fee which then goes into that prize pool. It means there's no additional financial impact for those uh, teams that don't want to necessarily play it as competitively but it offers that sort of that choice for each team coming into it. It doesn't reduce the competition but offers a different way of looking at it. Anything to add on to that? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it a bit easier. <laughs> Now, apart from that, um, with the division of players and with the monetary, do you reckon that is a stepping stone to then getting sponsorship? Because I know in the past, the Nationals competition has been sponsored by the likes of Pepsi, including uh, many others as well. But what do you think would be the process of going about that with this division? I think the idea of making it more competitive across the field helps sponsorship. Um, the numbers helps sponsorship. And if the divisioning of the competition increases the numbers, then that's another stepping stone towards getting more sponsorship and the monetization just it justifies it it sort of it sort of uh, validates it as a as a, a more competitive sponsorship a more competitive sport um, which sponsorship can get behind 
Well, that's just about all we have time for today. I'd like to thank you guys both very much for coming here today and talking about this stuff. Um, I'd also like to thank you guys and wish you guys luck in the future Cascades. <laughs> we know we'll do well. This has been the panel, short and sweet, just like me, Minnie.